Welcome, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this tutorial I would like to introduce you to Houdini. This is aiming at total beginners and we're not talking about any fancy particle effects or so, but just about how to get the basic stuff done you would expect from any 3D package. I'm talking about a rendering with a light source, some geometry we created within Houdini and a shader on it. Uh, so really simple stuff. We will go through this step by step how to set it all up with the geometry, light, the renderer, the camera, a shader material and an environment light. So let's get started with a new scene. This is what Houdini looks like when you first start it. If you don't like the color you can change it under edit color settings and set it to dark. I'll leave it with white light and we're starting off with a box. If you want to you can use the top shelf here which makes it look like a usual 3D program but the truth is most will take place here in the note editor. But just for start let's control, hold down control and click on the box so just so that we have something in all those fields but now we can collapse the top bar by just clicking on this little bar here and to get rid of those arrays or those arrows rather press escape now you can see that we don't only have we not only have a cube in the viewport here but also a node to it in our node editor and there are also some specific parameters for our geometry object or our geometry node. First of all let's focus on the 3D view. You may see a grid here or not but however you can zoom in and out by using the scroll wheel you can hold down the left mouse button to rotate around in your scene. Holding down the middle mouse button will make you able to pan the view. And the right mouse button is for hold, uh, zooming in and out. If you want to create a camera from your perspective, you just click on this yellow box which says which says no cam and click on new camera and once you scroll out of it you will see that you left a camera right at the place where you have been before. If you want to dive inside the camera just click on cam 1 and if you want to take the camera with you then just click on the lock. Now if I reposition my camera I can just do it and click on the lock again to leave the camera at the new position. You can also see that by having clicked on new camera I created another node which contains the camera. Now these nodes are able to contain other nodes and you can dive inside the nodes by pressing I and you can go outside by pressing U. Alternatively, you can double click on a node to get inside and you see that it worked by just looking at the hierarchies here. I can also click back on object level then I'm on my scene level which holds all my geometry, my cameras, my lights and maybe even my shaders if I want to. So what we want to do is we go inside this node which is called box object one now we can rename it to geo and press enter dive inside and we see our box here um, if I want to I can resize it by pressing um, point oh, point 0.2 so it's 20 centimeters in height and putting it to point 0.1 in the y direction 
to make it really sit on the floor. If I have some selection here, I like a polygon selection or points or edges, I just go to the object mode. So uh, this should work better. If you have problems zooming in and out, just hold down uh, the space bar and zoom in then. Okay, how do we go on? Um, I already changed the box and inside the geo node, I can also hit tab to create a, another node. So this menu works from every place where I hit tab in the 3D view or here in geometry. I can now just type if I want to like um, sphere or alternatively if I press escape now and tap again I can choose from primitives different objects such as the sphere. Now I may be a little disappointed because I can't really see the sphere so I have to click on this very right flag to make it visible and by pressing spacebar and scrolling out I can see the sphere now, but not the box anymore. And this is not because one is hiding in the other, inside the other. This is because I can only see one object at a time if I'm doing it like this. So let's shrink down the sphere by setting uniform scale to 0.5 and position it to 0.7. So that should sit on right on my box. If I want to see both objects being displayed and rendered later on, I need a merge node. You can connect nodes with each other by just clicking on those little arrows and dragging them there. You can rid of, get rid of connections by right clicking and saying disconnect. The other way to disconnect a node is by shaking it. And now this is completely isolated. You can also select two nodes and when you're creating a merge now, um, sorry, if I have a merge node here and have both selected, I can just make one connection and it takes everything that has been selected. Now, if I click on merge, I see my whole sculpture here. And we can later on define some other measurements. So, and this is, um, early example of a procedural workflow so we can basically change stuff any uh, place in time so if we decide, decide later stuff should change then we can really fluently dive inside those node networks and change stuff so this is all i need and uh, geometry wise i have a camera as well so Next, what I need is a light source. Just type in light if you are on object level. And to move the light outside of our geometry, you just change those values. Or you could alternatively just click on the move tool and the light. And then you can move the light source around. I go back to my selection arrow and dive inside the camera. So now I see that everything has moved a little. So I have to take the camera with me, clicking on the lock icon again and moving the camera up. Now I could um, start to set up the renderer. So to do so, press ROP, which is the place where all my renderers are hiding later on. So ROP network double click on it and press mantra, which is the renderer inside Houdini. And um, now I would like to see my rendering. So just let's just move over to render view. And you can see here it is using the mantra one renderer, which is this one. And it's using the Rob camera, which is the camera I defined here, which is the camera one. That is correct. If I want to change it later on to another camera, I click here 
on this button and I can choose from a list of other cameras once I set them up. So hit accept, that's okay. And now I can click on render and I should get a result within a few seconds. There's my rendering. So first of all, I want um, a smaller picture. This is um, too high just for previews, I think. So I go back in my network. Sorry about that. I can leave it in the render view, but I have to go to my camera and I can now make this much smaller, say 600 by 600 and change the focal length to maybe 80 to zoom in. We can also make this 600 or let's say 800 by 600 to have it a bit wider and zoom out like so. Now this is a first way of rendering. I wouldn't recommend to leave it that way. We can add another uh, light which is called environment light. This is there for lighting up shadow areas by an intensity of 0.2 I'd say. And you can already see the renderer is updating. Let's now um, disable the preview so we're getting a clean renderer within those buckets right away. And let's switch our render engine by double clicking on the ROB, clicking on Mantra and diving inside those options. To get more space, just click on this little downward arrow so we see all the options at once. We don't go, go through all this, but first important thing is the place where your renderings are going to be saved. So click on this little sheet of paper, choose desktop, and here you can just type test render .png or use EXR if you're more convenient with that and hit accept. Here I can define the file format once again. I use OpenEXR with a 16-bit um, color depth. Apart from that, I want to switch the render engine to the physical-based one which is capable of creating photographic effects like depth of field and motion blur right away without um, further things I really have to define. It works almost out of the box, which is rare for Houdini. And here I can define some more um, quality settings under samples. I could, um, first of all, um, change the noise level. We will make use of this once we set the limits to the diffuse limits to two, so we get indirect lights. You can see the sphere is now getting some more light on um, the bottom, and we also get some more noise. And to fight the noise, we go back to sampling, and we can do basically two things we can set up the sampling, the samples to up to six to by six. This would um, give an OK quality. We can also try 5x5. Five five. By the way, if you want to see the 100% renderer, just open this bar and click on Home. And um, if you want to increase the quality further, you shouldn't necessarily go to pixel samples, but you can also raise the max ray samples, which, which doesn't cost as much render time and improves the quality further. The other um, parameter is the noise level. You can reduce this down to 001 if you really want to um, get a very clear image, but that costs render time, so 005 would also lead to clean images. Now we are heading towards um, a rather good render quality. There are obviously far more settings we can try out. But um, I would recommend to have um, two renderers, one for previews and one high quality 
um, for the final image. So you can just leave this to high, copy paste it, call it the other one, the new one low and really use really, really low settings on the low one. You can tell here as well that it's low and just give it a rather bad quality here. And if you want to see it in the renderer, you just click here on low. Click on renderer and it may take a few seconds, but then you really get this new quality with lower settings, like a bad diffuse level and less um, reflections and refractions. All right, now how can we go on? Let's have a look at our nodes. I use U to get up again and what we're now missing are some shaders. So press shop for stands for shading operator network and this is where I hold my materials. All my shaders are in there. So press I and now we're starting to get some um, some materials so just type material in there and you get the material shader builder which is also called a warp material which we can rename to say plastic to know what's what is supposed to be later inside the plastic you will find more a uh, rather yeah a new node network which is um, too big for this part of the screen so let's just change places I drag the network view to here and I move the scene view down here and also the render view you can tell by this little black arrow that appears will land here so now I can um, lower the resolution to 400 by 300 to make it fit inside my screen and dive inside the material plastic again and um, you can see that we have two components that coming out of that network that are surface output and displacement output and we're only um, applying stuff to the surface output and to get physical materials you just dip, type phys and you can use um, the diffuse or the specular to get the most common shaders done. So I start off with a physical based diffuse and while there are a few settings here I just go on and make sure that the light that this material reflects is not brighter than the energy or the light that comes in. So I use the conserve energy node and connect the F the yellow F with the surface outputs F. Of course this doesn't update uh, right now because we are still uh, having, uh, we're not having linked the plastic material to the geometry and we can now um, give that a material by clicking here on material choosing the plastic. So I just clicked on this button and chose from my hierarchy so I can see everything gets really really bright now. Going back to um, the lighting just for a second to define some more options about the light source. First of all we can of course change the intensity but I rather like to make uh, switch from point light to sphere at first and this sphere size can be defined under area light to something like 0.2 and I can also uh, get rid of normalizing light intensity to area um, or let's rather leave it on but give it some attenuation to make the light go weaker over distance set it to physical correct now I look at the hottest spot which is around here and increase the light intensity so that we don't have an area which is um, totally bright but we still want to have some detail here on the surface. Um, next I 
can now give the material which is applied to the sphere and to the um, floor by going inside the plastic and define another parameter. So just type parameter and this parameter will be the diffuse color and that's the internal name so I just write it out like that. That's the visible name for uh, the artist, diffuse color and we tell it that it is a color that we can predefine here saying a, a gray and the good thing about parameters is that they will appear on top of my plastic material here's the diffuse color I can change the way I like it. To make this diffuse color become a part of my diffuse shader I can now multiply it and now let's just for testing purposes give this a red and we see this worked rather well. Now we can enhance the shader by typing physical again and this time we choose a specular which is a reflection and this needs a conserve energy as well which can be connected right away so we see what it does namely reflecting and next we have to combine those two shaders by using an add node and we want to add the diffuse information with the specular one and pipe this inside the output. Now of course the amount of reflection is not too realistic so let's just use another parameter for this which I call spec intensity and specular intensity as the readable name. Now this is standardly set to maybe 10% so I type 0.1 and it ranges from 0 which is no effect to 1 which is full effect. Now I can just multiply the specular with just drag it over so this is one line um, with the intensity amount and now you see it's getting a bit better, a bit more realistic. You can also define stuff here in the specular settings. But the amount of reflection itself can now be uh, changed on top level. Okay, now you probably don't want to have the same materials all over the place, so we just go up and change the material application by just deleting the material link and going inside the geo network. And then here we can set up a material node which is just working on the sphere and in there it's asking for the material so we say plastic and that way we split up the material application so I can go up now pressing U and this worked as well. Now if I wanted to see the environment in my background I can just enable render light geometry and to make this clear I just choose a bluish tone around 210 with some saturation. This would be a nice start for a rendering. Now how can you save this image to your hard disk? You can just right click in the render view and say save frame. Then you could manually choose a place on your hard disk like my desktop and you just name this test render or rendering um, EXR 
all right let me just choose png for a different difference and you choose png as a format if you want to make it sure and then you press save and you wait until it says image write has been completed so um, this would be the first image on our desktop with that rendering alternatively you can go to robnet choose the high quality and render this either to mplay which is um, a picture viewer that comes or animation viewer that comes with houdini itself and um, inside there you can analyze your renderings and save them out there it is this is the rendering and later on you can also right click and save the frame and save the sequence just the way we did it from this place another nice function in the render view is the ability to snap stuff so if i want to compare this rendering with say a uh, different shader setting like this then i can compare stuff here i can snap this and um, press minus and plus to compare the different versions and another option to just render it out is to press render execute then the image would be just saved down here. Well, this was a basic introduction to Houdini, just doing all the standard stuff. There's obviously a lot more to discuss. And um, I think others are probably better at explaining that because they simply know more. So if you want to find out certain functions, go to forums such as um, sidefx.com where you not only can download Houdini for free but also go to the uh, forums community Houdini forum um, has many members that explain stuff there's also oddforce.net which has a very active forum in uh, very uh, well useful um, categories like modeling, shading, or rendering, and so on. And there's also lots of video tutorials on Vimeo and some commercial ones as well. Yeah, I hope I could like help you how to do the basic stuff. Thank you for watching.